Hey, hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Mao. I'm a game designer working on the video game industry and welcome to the Game Design Perspective. Before anything, quick disclaimer, everything I'm going to talk about in this video is my opinion and my opinion alone. It does not represent any other person, entity or studio past, present or future that I work on. It's just me and my opinion. With that said, let's begin. Today I want to talk about Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, which was originally released back in 2014. I originally played it on the Xbox One and I had a blast with it. I spent more than 100 hours on the first month that the game was released. So that's how much I enjoy that game. Today I want to actually do a quick playthrough of the main story mission, which is just one mission. I want to do a quick playthrough and after that, uh, maybe in a future video, I want to talk about the mission design and map design and all of that. So today it's just, uh, it's just gonna be my playthrough and the thoughts I gather while actually playing it. And with that said, Let's begin. We will not be watching the cutscenes in the game because that's gonna take a while and I do enjoy them, but you know, Metal Gear is complicated. Before we begin, it's very important that at the very beginning, we listen to Cass. What we'll see right now is that Cass will teach us in three steps how to play a stealth game. Pretty much the loop of how to play a stealth game. The first thing Cass will tell us, hey, this is an infiltrating mission, so stay out of sight. All right, we know we need to hide. But then Cass will tell us, Hey, get your binoculars out and recon the area. And where are we? If we take a look at the mission, we're at probably at the highest point we can be in the entire mission. All right. We are at a vantage point and Cass is telling us, hey, take your binoculars and study and study. All right. And you're actually rewarded with information by doing this. You mark the soldiers and the elements in the map once you focus them with your binoculars. So the more information we have, the better we can assess the mission. All right, we have marked already five enemies. Those are five enemies that we will always be able to see their position in the map. Six, there you go, awesome. You see, so that's the first thing Cass told us. Oh, I didn't see, I, I marked another one, but I didn't see that. Okay, let's begin. First, I'm gonna change to silent pistol. I don't like killing in this game. And this cast is like, keep low. You have this VFX on the screen that tells you, hey, someone is looking at you, keep low. So Cass is pretty much telling us, hey, avoid lines of sight. Avoid people seeing you. All right, stay hidden. In this case, the line of sight is pretty obvious, which is a light, probably the most obvious way to make a line of sight, which is very beautiful and very well done. So we avoid lines of sight, the level guides us through here, and once we hear, Cass tells us, you can get rid of this guy using a gun. All right, that's because, well, it is a little bit more complicated. You need to do a little bit more things to get rid of this guy. But the level is pretty much telling us, hey, either you get rid of the dude or you can avoid the dude, you can avoid the guard. So the level, along with Cass, is telling us the last step in, in a self loop, which is either engage or avoid. So we have our three pillars for the loop. You study, you observe, you avoid lines of sight by moving, and engage or avoid. You see, I'm going to engage with this guy because that's I'm following the tutorial, I'm following the mission as Cass was well presenting it to us. I didn't use the gun, sorry. All right. Now we're up here, we completed the loop, and if we start the loop again, which is pretty much what the game is telling, what the level is telling us, because we started at a very high vantage point. So if we start the loop again, what do we have? All right, a lot more guards to pick up. We're marking a lot of dudes right here, and that allows us to study and assess and make decisions way better than without us knowing. So yeah, knowledge is power. And if you look at this, you're at a vantage point. What's the next, next thing you do, you see? Well, you see another vantage point and another vantage point right there. Those watchtowers, they're pretty much guiding us through the beginning of the mission. Let's try following those vantage points. Let's try reaching the next one because Yes, Kaz will tell us this a little bit later once we exit the tutorial zone, but we'll, he'll tell us, hey, this is where the mission is, all right? So we need to go that way. 
So it doesn't make too much sense to go that way. All right. And it's very beautiful. Oh, I should have moved the light. It's very beautiful. Oh, let's mark it. Let's mark the truck. Let's mark the truck. I didn't mark the truck. Oh, I did it. Cool. And it's very beautiful because you're actually locked inside the tutorial zone. So you can either exit through the previous vantage point that I showed you, which is some sort of a cliff, or through here. But you're sort of safe. As safe as you can be in a stealth game, to be honest. All right. Let's reach the next one. Let's get rid of this dude. Let's interrogate him. The more info we have, the better. Knowledge is power, guys. Guys posted. That's that's the one I consider it to be the best one. Especially if it's your first time playing this game. All right. So this guy, we took this guy out. We get our binoculars out. What do we see? The next vantage point. Right? So the level is pretty much guiding us to Chico without us actually taking a look at I look at our eye droid. You see, if I look, I was pretty much looking in a in a uh, in a straight line to where Chico is to our objective. So yes, we have that. We need to follow that vantage point. Just before we do so, let's try marking more enemies, but I don't think I can see any more enemies right here. So that vantage point is pretty much to guide us to where we need to go. Oh, and we also, like, we see the next vantage point, and below it, we see a red door framed. Why? Because those are the ones we can interact with. We're following the loop. We already studied before. We're about to avoid lines of sight, and we either avoid engaging, engaging with people, or we engage with them. I was pretty sure. Oh, yeah, there's the, there's the guy. Saw him from the vantage point. All right. That, is it the final boss? I cannot. Like, why can I hit him? My God, why? There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. All right. That was the final boss, apparently. So, in this section of the game of the of the level, there are not too many guards, so it's not very easy to get caught. But right here. We have one guard. I think there's another one. Yes, there are two guards. There are two guards, all right. So we take a look at them. We mark them. We know where they are. Right now, I'm not going to engage with them in any way. I'm going to let them go. Awesome. This part is very beautiful because we do have these tents that are actually very low. So if you get up, you can actually see where the guards are. And they actually, by the width of these hallways, you actually, like, there's this language that tells you, hey, the soldiers are most probably not going to be there. So you're safe. You're safe if you're, if you're between the tents. And that loop is also become is also true for shorter as a shorter loop. As you see before with the dudes on the tents, right? Like I studied them, I avoided the lines of sight, and I engaged with them. Okay, so we come from there. Let's start studying here. Okay, see more guards that we have the info on. We're very close now. Now there is this play with light and dark here that is, feels very Splinter Cell-ish. I like it a lot. I'm not turning the lights off just to make it clear. Like I want to make it as clear as possible how the mission guides you. So that's why I'm always only relying on the gun. Oh, you know what? I don't have it marked. All right. I don't need to headshot this guy. Boom, oh, there we go. All right. Ah, uh, you see? You see how Chico, how the prison cells are below us, how we need to go walk down? That's because it is making a natural vantage point for us. So before we assess that beat or that section of the level, well, they pretty much give you a vantage point, a natural vantage point. And that is reinforced by the idea that you have this uh, 
some sort of sand pillows here so that you watch and you're in cover all right and then you can start seeing the prisoners as well you have this natural vantage point before you assess this section we're starting another loop and what do we have there another vantage point so where are we drawn from here like yeah you can look for the entrance which is there but i i've always felt like like the mission guides you there and i actually feel that i'm right because once we get here Cass starts talking to us right and he tells us he talked to amanda yeah i know my i know my brother i know when he's lying that's what Cass tells us and then he tells us that amanda is ready for the worst now this game by heart guys i absolutely adore it all right let's get up you have no idea guys the month this came out 10 years ago i spent over a hundred hours playing this a hundred hours on a single level you see you have this vantage point again you find chico through here but you can see every single prisoner from here all right and then not only you have the vantage point you can enter and it's actually safer to do so because you don't need to properly engage with any of those guys. All right, let's get Chico out. All right, that guy's about to come in. You see here, this is a shorter loop, but it's the same. Observe. Well, here not we're not gonna even avoid lines of sight. Well, we already did. Oh, nice shot. Well, we avoided lines of sight by saying hidden and engage, all right? The avoiding part was a little shorter there, but it is there. It is part of the loop. And you see that loop is true. It's a shorter or a, or a larger loop within the mission. Oh my god, did it bounce? Oh my god. No, my god, no, 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 no. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was getting nervous for the sake of the video, guys. They called uh, the helicopter. There you go. This is also part of the tutorial, right? Like, they tell you, hey, ask for the chopper. Before they asked us, I, ju I was just... Uh, explaining some things but castles is like hey hey call the call the helicopter uh to the rv to the rendezvous and get chico out all right morphos here cool let's get chico out this part is incredible chico will give you this tape or will fall from his pocket or something like that and you will actually start listening uh as they took chico and pass now right now we need to go and save pass that's our next objective there are two objectives in the bit in the mission save chico and save pass this part is very well done they tell you to listen all right they tell us hey listen to the recording right and then it turns out chico was recording while they took them so you will hear a lot of things happening a lot of things happening not not necessarily like lines or any dialogue but all right wait a sec there's that dude over there this part is very well scripted all right we well, have that dude over there and then every single time every single time you walk through here You'll notice that there's one guy watching us over there and another guy actually about to get into a truck. But this is very important because if you're actually walking while listening to the tape, you will actually, you will actually see the truck and see the flag as Cass is telling you, oh, a flag, a truck, right? It's very well scripted. All right. Let's interrogate this dude. That's we can. Ah, oh, nice. 
All right, so we're seeing that dude get on top of the truck. And right now, I'm gonna pause here. If you're quick enough, you can actually get on top of it. And this guy will follow the route that you hear in Chico State. You will hear the gate because you in the tape, you hear a gate opening up, right? And you hear the gate and this guy pretty much sneaks you in the same way they took Chico out of his prison cell, Chico and Pass. It's so well scripted for the sake of, of the loop and all of that, I'm not gonna get on top of it right now. I'm just gonna show the prompt. But it is so well scripted that if you're quick enough to follow the tape, well, then you're rewarded by getting on top. I'm gonna get out of it. You see, it's so well done. For the sake of the loop and showing the mission design, I'm not gonna follow it up. I already taught you how to do it and you can actually experiment with it. Now, there are some vantage points that are not as obvious. They act as, as more as I would call them natural vantage points, which are, which are getting on top of buildings. But you're often encouraged and actually guided through the level to do so. Right? And you see, we follow the loop. Three guards. You see, we already have 24 guards marked. And you see how the truck is about to get in? If we took the truck, we'd be right there and we will see... We will see a cutscene of the door opening while we hear the same sound of Chico's tape. That is very well scripted. All right. Let's move on. Now, as you see, study, we observe. We're just doing what Cast told us to do. And then, engage. I don't know, like, cool. Nice. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my god. All right, that was risky. I risked it a little too much. <gasps> oh, nice. I froze this guy. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Ooh. This part of the mission, exactly this section, the helipads, I consider it to be the hardest section in the level. Why? Because to get in, you have to go through parts where there are very little places to hide from the enemy's lights of sight. And then I'm going to lure the guy there. I don't want to waste all my bullets on you. Cool. I don't have too many bullets. All right. You see, to get to either of those... Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to... Sorry, I'm going to get rid of the camera for the sake of... Of making it easier on us so that we can actually talk about the mission. All right. We mark those guys. Cool. So, you see, we have two, two ways of entering, but because we already missed the one from the truck, we are actually being guided to the next one by that light. All right. I see all of these guys want to be funny dudes today. All right. We're guided into the next beat by following that light, pretty much lighting the red door. All right. But to get to there, we need to go through a part that has pretty much no ways to hide from their lines of sight. So I do consider this part of the level to be probably the hardest of them all. All right. Awesome, dude. <laughs> exactly when I've said what I had to say. Cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, look at this. How beautiful. Let's see. If there's ammo here. And then, well, we found the drainage channel. Castell says, hey, you can use it. I don't think we need to be able, we need to use it because I think we already got rid of all of the guards right here. Nice. 
this section in my book, it feels very like classic Metal Gear. There are small corridors, like boxes, so that you avoid lines of sight. It has a very classic uh, layout. Oh, look at this. There we go. Info. Oh my god, another guy saw me. Oh my god. All right, I'll hide here. Probably I did that. All righty, we did it that. I, to be honest, yes, I played this so often that I don't, I, I'm not used to triggering alert statuses anymore. But since I'm talking, like I got, I got a little bit distracted. Sorry about that, guys. But well, thanks to the magic of editing, we don't have to deal with me just having to hide and wait. All right, so we got to pass. So we have completed two objectives now the third one is get pass out and with that we're done with the mission we're done with the game it's my first entire playthrough of a game in the channel guys hope you like it <laughs> all right we have new guards right here so you you have two options either you go through where we came here where the mission sort of guided us or you come through here both options are valid because well now we're on our on our own right uh if we take a look at our idroid right and see where we can call the helicopter we can see like okay right we cannot place the helicopter on the helipads because the danger is high it tells you, well, danger is moderate if you go through to where you left Chico. But this part is the danger is always low. So in a way, they might actually be telling you, hey, now come back here. To come back to where you began the mission. All right. So you're being guided again. Not, not very aggressively. It's actually a very soft guiding because... Now is when you are left on your own. You're on your own, kid. And now they're not they're not being extremely aggressive on how they guide you because well, you already completed the first two objectives. You're on your own, kid. You always have been. And if you take a look at, at right right here, in this uh, sort of parking lot storage, ever since we crossed the red door, you see that we have very little places to go up and, and observe. One is right behind us. One is over there. Uh, but there are very, very little places. You cannot get on top of many buildings right now. You cannot observe too much. So you're relying on, on using your, the corners to do so. That increases, that increases difficulty quite a lot, actually. So this is where the mission starts to get very hard, if you ask me. And the, the game sort of had to... Whoa! So now, if you do not get inside by using the truck, well, the door is now open. So they're giving you a lot of freedom in how you tackle this part. You can go through there. You can get exit through there, right? They're giving you a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of freedom, but you're sort of also not motivated into going there. Why? Because I don't know if you guys, Snake, come on. You know what? Just shoot at that dude. All right. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but that over there is a tank. They literally turn the tank and they are looking straight at a door. So you're not motivated into going there. They're sort of luring you, but you're not motivated into going there. It's very fun to get past out of with, with this uh, with this car, but I think we're gonna risk it, all right? We're in a safe spot, so I'm gonna call the rendezvous. I'm gonna go to where the mission began. And complete a triangle. 
and you'll see what I mean by the end of the video. It's underrated how hard it is to talk while playing a stealth game. <laughs> it is so hard. I do consider stealth games to be actually quite hard. They're very tense and they involve... Where was the door? Ah, here it is. They involve. They actually involve that players uh, engage with the enemies in very, very hard ways, and that is by actually luring them and doing all of that stuff, which is sort of hard. Good thing we marked it. You see, if we had not marked this guy, we probably wouldn't have seen him. All right, I'm gonna open the door softly. Stealth games. I do consider them to be actually very hard. Because they involve, they, they actually ask the player to engage with the enemies in ways that no, I don't think any other genre ask you to, which is actually by luring them and studying them and engaging or avoiding them, right? It, it's actually harder than just getting close to an enemy and just hitting him, right? In many ways, just mash the bottom to get rid of the enemy, right? If you do it here, you are underpowered against all of those guys that are coming at you. So you'll probably lose if you don't hide. So that, that's why I consider stealth games to be actually somewhat hard. And this game, well, this part, this part is where it gets tough. If you follow the, the way I went through, which is sort of, again, what the game sort of asks you to, it's not too hard. But if you go through any other way, it actually becomes very, very hard. And yes, on my first try, I, I did actually lose. I did actually trigger some game overs and all of that. So yes, this is. I don't consider this to be an easy mission. I do consider it starts fairly easy, but I don't consider it to be uh, an overall easy mission. But it, uh, <laughs> it kind of had to be like that. Since again, they were selling you an entire, like a mission. Uh, even if it was half the price, it's still just a mission. So yes, a lot of people considered it to be actually overpriced. Again, again, I don't really care. I do think this is the best old mission ever made. There we go, we're out. There you go, guys. We made it. We only triggered an alert, and I'm sorry about that. But I'm disappointed in myself. There we go. We're out. All right. That's the ending of Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. All right, guys. That was my playthrough. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you actually got something interesting out of it while I was gathering my thoughts while I studied the mission. Now, like, next week, what I want to do is take out a map and start seeing how the mission could have possibly been designed by the team at Konami. I think that's going to be very interesting. I think we can learn a lot together because I really want to study this mission. I played it back when I was not a designer just yet. So that's why I'm so in into learning everything I can about this game. Now, remember, this mission missions are very large. This mission was probably designed in a lot of time, so we're not going to gather everything about it, about the mission, even in the playthrough and the next video, which is an analysis of the level design on the map. But still, we can learn a lot about it, not only for stealth games, but for many other games. I think we can learn quite a lot about it. So I hope to see you guys next time. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you tune in next week to see what we can get out of this. Guys, thank you so, so much for watching. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you liked the video and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one, guys.